Hey, thanks so great to see you. Looking great. Thank you. Thanks for doing this. Love your brain. <laughs> Always representing me. Love your brain. Welcome. Thanks for having me. I've, just, I've been looking forward I to this. Love you. I love what you do. I love our friendship. Um, Thank you. And eight years ago, yeah. you came in. You I weren't did. sleeping. I had very severe sleep apnea. I, um, when I got my brain scan with you eight years ago, I was averaging about 90 minutes of total sleep a night for five straight years. Uh, with severe sleep apnea, I would stop breathing over 250 times a night. Each time, every, each episode was 10 seconds. So I'd wake up suffocating. I would use CPAP devices, dental devices, and it still, so it had nothing to do with quieting my mind. I don't do a lot of conscious rumination of thinking about things because uh, I have a very practiced mind, but um, that was a big challenge. A little afterwards, based on my my assessment with you, I had a I had a U triple P surgery where they took out my uvula, my soft palate, my tonsils to create more airflow, and my sleep uh, went from 90 minutes to average a little over four hours, uh, which is not a lot, but it's considerably more than than it was. For people that know my story, I had learning difficulties. I had a traumatic brain injury when I was five years old. Um, because of it, I had processing issues, poor focus, poor memory. It took me three years longer just to learn how to read. And uh, one of the challenges was I, teachers would re repeat themselves over and over again. And I would pretend to understand, but I didn't really understand. At that same time, my parents, uh, they, they immigrated to the U.S. and had a lot of jobs, so I was, my primary caregiver was my grandmother. And at that same time, she started showing early signs of Alzheimer's. And she would call me by my father's name or she would repeat herself just 30 seconds later. And it was, you know, as of five or six, she passed it when I was about seven or eight. It, was, it, it just left an, an impression, certainly, in terms of was that normal? Is that what, if I already had my issues. You know, when I was nine years old, I was slowing down a class. I was being teased very harshly for it. And a teacher came to my defense, but all I remember her doing, she pointed to me in front of the whole entire class in front of everybody and said, leave this boy alone. That's the boy with the broken brain. And um, adults have to be very careful with their external words because they become a child's internal words. So I would say, oh, I didn't know I had a broken brain. So every time I did badly in school on a quiz, book report, I would say, oh, because I have the broken brain. Every time I was picked for sports, which was all the time, I would say, oh, because I have the broken brain. And that became kind of my, my automatic negative thought that you talked about, the, the, those ants. And um, so I put my studies aside and I start studying this idea of meta-learning, this learning how to learn. How do you focus? How do you remember? How do you read better, faster? Um, and I started studying a little bit about my brain um, because the brain doesn't come with an owner's manual, as you know, you, you wrote, 40 something books on it. Um, but it's, you know, it's the most important thing. I always wear a brain on my shirt because I think what you see, you take care of, right? You see your hair, you see your clothes, you see your car, you see your skin, you take care of it because it's in your constant awareness, conscious awareness, but you don't see the thing that takes care of us. And so, um, you know, I, I dedicated myself to learning those things. And shortly afterwards, I, about 60 days into it, a light switch flipped on and I started to, to get things. I, my, uh, I started to have better focus. I started to retain information. Um, my grades shot up. And not only that, but my life got so much better because of that level of confidence and confidence. Um, but I could help but help other people. And the reason I do this to this day, over 30 years later, is I started to tutor because I wanted to share this. Like, shame on me if I can help people who are suffering and struggling the way I did. And so I felt the moral responsibility very early on. And one of my first students, she was a freshman in college, she read 30 books in 30 days, not skim or scan. She really read it. And I wanted to find out not how I taught her how, but why and her purpose. Her mother was dying of terminal cancer it was doctors gave her mother two months to live 60 days. And the books she was reading were books to save her mom's life. And I get a call six months later and she's crying, crying, crying. And then I find out they're tears of joy. And her mother not only survived, but is getting really better. Doctors don't know how or why they were calling it a miracle. But her mother attributed 100% to the great advice she got from 
her daughter, who learned it from all these books. And in that moment, Daniel, I realized that if knowledge is power, then learning is our superpower. And it's a superpower we all we all have. You know, and in that moment also I found my my purpose, you know, uh, in terms of helping build better, better, brighter brains, you know, no brain left behind. You know, and that's why I've always been drawn to, to your work, you know. And, and no brain right. left behind. Yes. I like that uh, so yeah. much. Such a great story. So I wouldn't be worried about your brain. Your brain fits your story. Yeah. <laughs> now but, that, and so the message is even if you had have a, a traumatic hurt, brain even if you injury, have a brain, they're workaround. Sleep apnea and then these that things. can make a huge difference. So yeah. whatever we see good. is good news. We do a study called SPECT, and SPECT looks at blood flow yeah. and activity. It looks at how your brain works. And basically it shows us three things, good activity, too little, or too much. And then my job is to balance it. If it's too low, I'll raise it. If it's too high, yeah. calm it down. This is what a healthy scan looks like, or even symmetrical activity. And then we look at your brain in 2014. It is just not healthy. It looks damaged. It looks like it's had trauma and chronic oxygen depth. And then we did it today. It's way better if you look here. How do you know? It's like way better. See these holes? Mm -hmm. You don't have holes here. Okay. That's a big deal. Um, I, I did the things like the hyperbaric because you you um, recommended them. And then your brain looks pitted. It's still some decreases, but it's healthier overall. So we're making progress, That's which great. makes me happy. I, I can tell from this one to this one, it's healthy overall. Still the anxiety. I always say some anxiety is good. And um, Huberman talks about this area being the go or no go mm -hmm. area. You probably have trouble not looking. Probably always on, always creating, always thinking, always um, not stopping. But I think the most important part of the brain is the cerebellum. Okay. And your cerebellum is good. It was good before and it's good now. And so whatever coordination exercises you do, keep doing yeah. them. And I, and I think you are insanely cool memory. Yeah. It's part because you have a great cerebellum. And the things that your cerebellum had been damaged it would have been way harder to come back to. Yeah. And the, the so with the, the mindful body movements, uh, the, the things that you and I play like table tennis and the dance and all, all that contributes to martial arts, anything where you're putting your mind. Anything where you gotta get your eyes, your hands, and your coordination all working together. Yeah. And fairly new information. 80% of your cerebellum is cut. Yeah. It's emotion. It's not just coordination, but if you can activate it with coordination, you're going to learn so much better. Um, so I'd sort of be excited about the progress. I mean, you can't quite yeah. go celebrate with alcohol. That'd be bad. No, no, no. <laughs> so you already can see it's better on the underside. I like that a lot. I don't have the trained eye that you do. I, I've seen a lot of brain, but it's you. Um, I take your word for it. But what we want to do is get that. How do we take care of something that with those local issues there? Well, we have to work globally. Okay. So this is where you are today. He sleep deprived better than where we were in 214 if we do all the things we know how to do. Yeah. This is where it can be. I love it. It'll be so much better. 
Yeah, let's get that. And so every day, is this good for my brain or bad for it? Is it good for yeah. my brain or bad for it? You need to be on an Alzheimer's prevention program. Did you ever take our packets to a day? No. That would have... take our packets. Okay. Because in it, multiple vitamin, but not... It's a brain-directed multiple. Okay. High doses of B6, B12, mm -hmm. folate, and vitamin D. And high dose, high quality fish oil and a brain boost that works. So, okay. and we, it's my NFL for it. There's a lot of my NFL players have your brain. And 80% of them are better in as little as two months. That's remarkable. I'll, I'll implement this. I'm, I'm good. You know, I encourage people who, who watch, you know, your, your show and listen to your podcast and your content is knowledge is one thing but you know they, they there's this phrase growing up on gi joe is like knowing is half the battle i think the other half of the battle is putting it into action and practice but my message is that you know regardless of people's age or background or career educational health, financial situation gender history iq that everybody could be better right we just weren't taught a lot of the things that are in all your books and podcasts and you know here at the clinic and it's very uplifting knowing that that we can make a new decision and it can change things. Um, have you ever tried happy saffron? Did I ever send it to you? No, but I'm happy. Oh, oh it's saffron. It's, it's our second best selling product. Really? It's our second best selling product. First, most people do that for sleep. It's been shown. There are studies shown for sleep, for mood, for memory. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you for this. I, I think what you teach should be basic in school. Yeah. The, why do you get through school without learning how to do school? It's insane. I got to meet Paul Simon recently. Mm -hmm. It was so much fun. And because I quote his song, Kodachrome, all the time. Mm -hmm. When I think back on all the crap I learned in high school, it's a wonder I can think at all. Yeah. You know, what I teach, what you teach, yeah. should be in preschool. I, I hope I can be a good example, because I do believe that the life we live are the lessons we teach. And so I want to be, I'm, you know, I think a lot of times I, I you know, and because I know you, and we've known each other a long time, you practice what you post. And that's not always, you know, uh, what, what everyone does. <laughs> and so I think it's important that we practice what we post and it's better well, well done than well said. And so, um, you don't live the message you suck this messenger. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and part of the, the prescription here is me taking some time, you know, to be able to, it's, it's just, you know, I'm more and more thinking about legacy and what I leave behind. And I just want to make sure that I feel like I do as, as much as I can.